Okay, so in a previous video, we walked through installing Windows Server 2022 with a desktop experience. Now let's take a look at doing it without a desktop experience. So I've got another virtual machine here. Go ahead and hit spacebar to start our installation. Now, the installation, the initial installation is going to be almost exactly identical. So you can reference back to that video for some of these screens that we're looking at here. I want to show you the difference, and then I want to show you the difference for the initial configuration. So here's the biggest difference in the initial setup process. If I want a GUI, I'm going to install the standard evaluation desktop experience. If I don't, and notice this is the default to install without the desktop experience. So this is going to install with the without a GUI. So it's going to be a command line only interface. Now that's going to give me some advantage. Uh, benefits. Uh, number one, it's going to give me less overhead being used by my operating system, which means that I'm going to have more available memory processor cycles, less disk space used for my operating system, less, um, less packages used for my operating system, which is going to give me a lower attack surface and it's going to be easier to update. So lots of benefits resource wise for running without that GUI. There's also kind of an inherent security feature in this. And that is, <coughs> excuse me, a command line operating system has a very low degree of discoverability. Whereas a desktop operating system has a high degree of discoverability. And what I mean by that is this. In a desktop operating system, I can hover my mouse over things. I can right click. I can click around. I can click on menus, right? I can, I can try to figure out how to use the system just by clicking around in it. With a command line operating system, I don't have that same high degree of discoverability. I have a low degree of discoverability. I kind of need to know more before I can try to figure it out. So what that means is if somebody gains access to the console, go ahead and click my restart now button. If somebody gains access to the console of a system that is running a GUI, somebody was using it, left it unlocked, something like that it's going to be easier for them to click around and try to figure out your system. If they have a, if somebody leaves a system unlocked or somebody gains access to a server console with a command line only, they don't have as much access to the system unless they know PowerShell, know some of the command line tools. Okay. So we finished our initial installation. Now we're reloading. Now, let me back up here. One other thing. To manage a system like this with command line only, let me go ahead and click my connect so I can use an enhanced session here and get a little larger screen. In order to do this, um, I can manage using PowerShell or I can manage it remotely using GUI tools. Now, I cannot install a GUI tool on here, but I can install it on a workstation or I can install it on another server and I can point that GUI tool to this system. And as long as I have rights to it, I can manage this command line only system using a GUI tool remotely. So that becomes another way we can manage the system. Okay, if you remember, when we installed the desktop operating system, the first thing it asked us to do is set the administrator password. And we've got that here too. The user's password must be changed before signing in. So I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to put in my generic password, tab down, and redo my generic password. And my password has been changed. So I'm going to hit enter on my OK. And then it's going to bring up my command prompt and it's going to load a configuration tool for me called sconfig. Now, sconfig is going to load by default all the time unless I do this command at command line. And if I do that, then sconfig is not going to come up. sconfig is basically a command line version of server manager. A little less capability. But that's the idea. So if I don't want this to show up, then I just do set dash s config space dash auto launch dollar sign false or set s config to not launch automatically. Now it's still going to be available anytime I need it just by using the command s config, but uh, that will kind of hide it. So I want to start now. 
when we did our initial configuration before we set the server name and we set the IP address. So let me show you how to do that using sconfig. And I'm going to use my numbered menu here. And I can't click on anything, but I'm going to use my mouse to point things out. So I want network settings. So that's going to be number eight. And then I have to choose my network adapter. And I've got a network adapter one here. It's the only adapter I have in the system. Now, if you're doing this on a physical computer, you're probably going to have more than one. So you want to be aware of that. Currently, my IP address is 169.254, which means that it tried to pull an IP address from a DHCP server and failed. And then I've got my description. So I want to change network adapter number one. And I want to start, so here's my IP address. DHCP enabled is true. So I can set my network adapter address or my DNS servers, or I can clear my DNS server settings. So I'm going to do option number one here to set my network adapter address. And I can set it to DHCP or static. And I want, and blank is just going to be cancel. And what cancel means is not, you know, skip this step. It means, you know, just bail me out entirely. Just stop. So I want to set a static IP address. And my IP address is going to be 10, turn on number lock, 10.10.10.12. .10 .10 and then I'm going to hit enter. And my subnet mask, now this time notice it gives me a blank equals a class C address. And I'm okay with that. That's what I want. So I'm just going to hit enter. Now, here's kind of a kicker. If you remember when we did it in the GUI, we did not have to set a default gateway. But remember, blank equals cancel. It doesn't mean give me no default gateway. So I kind of have to put in a default gateway here. Otherwise, if I hit enter without a default gateway, it just cancels my entire configuration. So even though I don't have a default gateway, I'm going to go ahead and fake one. So I'm going to say 10.10.10.1 is going to be my default gateway. So successfully set next to static IP, successfully released the DHCP lease, which there wasn't one, but that's okay. Enable static addressing, DHCP for this network address is, uh, dis or for this network adapter is disabled. Set the gateway, set the network adapter address. Now, it did not ask me for my DNS settings. Now, in the GUI, my DNS settings are on the same page as my IP address settings, not here. What I need to do is I need to go back to network settings 8 and interface index 1, and I need to set my DNS servers. So I'm going to click uh, hit 2 to set my DNS server, and my preferred DNS server is going to be 10.10.10.10, and hit enter. Now, notice here, blank equals cancel. If I hit enter without setting 1, then it just cancels setting anything. But now, blank equals none. So if I wanted to add an additional DNS server, I could. But if I only want this one, I can just hit Enter, and we're done. So I'm going to hit Enter to continue. And I'm going to exit this and go back to PowerShell. So that's going to be 15, and hit Enter. And I'm going to do, and notice the notification to launch server configuration. Again, simply run sconfig. So I'm going to do an IP config with no spaces forward slash all and we'll be able to see uh, here's our IP address that we configured here's our subnet mask that we configured here's our default gateway that we configured here's our DNS servers that we configured okay so everything's perfect so I'm gonna go back to sconfig and set the machine name by the way I can do that using PowerShell as well but we're just gonna use sconfig for this demo so here's where I can change my domain and work group. And again, notice in the command line, or not in the command line, in the GUI, I set the domain or work group and the machine name on the same screen. Here, there are two different options. So I'm going to say go to my computer name, and I'm going to change my computer name to server3. And hit enter. These changes will take effect after you restart. Same thing as with the GUI. Yes, I'm cool with that. And it reboots my computer. Now, when this comes back up, okay, we're going to log back in using my generic password. Sconfig is going to auto load. And it'll do this every time I load in, right? Just like loading server manager happens every time you boot a server with a command or you log into a server with a command line OS. I want to 
disable this. Now notice my options here. So here are my settings. Basically one through 11 are all of my settings. I have also have log off, restart the server, shut down the server, exit to command line. Command line takes me to PowerShell and some older versions of uh, Windows. Exiting, exiting to command line would take you to the command prompt, CMD, not PowerShell. You'd have to type PowerShell to load it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do 15 because I want to exit to command line. And I'm going to run my command set sconfig dash auto launch. And it's dollar sign false, which is a variable that means, you know, false. Spell auto launch correctly. And hit enter. Now, every time I log into this system, uh, it's not going to load sconfig. I'm going to exit here, and this is going to basically bring me back into the system. But notice that it brings me back without sconfig. I can also close this window. It's going to force it to bring me back. Now, previous versions of Windows Server, if you close the window, it would not automatically restart a new one. Um, what you would do instead is you would load Task Manager. So you could send a Control-Alt-Delete or whatever your keystroke sequence was to open up Task Manager. And... From task manager, then you could start a new task, either PowerShell.exe or command.exe. But uh, since I, I'm i running 2022, every time I close that, it will automatically pop up. Honestly, I wish it didn't. I like it better where I could close this and it just wouldn't come up. And then if somebody comes up to the system, they've got nothing, not even a command prompt window. But... This is the choices that Microsoft has made. Okay, also remember, sconfig will bring me back up to sconfig anytime that I need it. If I want it to come back, by default, it's set-sconfig space-auto-launch dollar sign true. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the server. And since I'm here in sconfig, I'm going to do the command 14, shut down the server, if I was not and I was a PowerShell, I could issue the command stop dash computer and that would shut it down as well. Are you sure you want to shut down the server? Yes. Yes, I am. And there we go. That is a basic configuration, installation and configuration of Windows Server without a GUI.